now and he's got some businessmen um, different from having just straight politicians. How important is leadership these days? Well, you know, everything, is, as John Maxwell said, rises and falls on leadership. I believe that no organization can move beyond the constraints of its leader. Um, I define an organization as two or more people in a relationship, and if you have influence with at least one person, that makes you a leader. So all of us are in multiple organizations, and we all have multiple relationships that we have influence with. And so leadership is absolutely critical in everything we do if we're going to shift anything towards either direction, positive or negative. It's absolutely at the core. Now, you know what you're talking about. I mean, you, you've taken companies and you've done what uh, some people would say is impossible. Um, some people see numbers where they say, uh, well, good for uh, for Taylor. He, uh, he took a sports company and uh, – uh, his operation with uh, some small individual investors, you made uh, $300 million in sales. Uh, that seems like an impossible feat, but uh, is something like that re- re- impossible? I mean, how do you do something like that? Well, you know, it, it's not impossible. And as you may have been told, uh, there's been multiple companies that have been given very, very short windows by their bankers. Uh, I call them one foot in the door of bankruptcy. Uh, and if, if the right principles, I call it the tools, ingredients, and behaviors, are put in place, those companies can be turned around very quickly. The interesting part is those same tools, ingredients, and behaviors also work in a marriage. They also work with a family. They work in a classroom setting. Uh, they work in a government building. Uh, it, it's, it's principles that work uh, because they are principles that you really can't start or stop. It's not something I can come up with. It's like oxygen or gravity. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a principle. If, if you stop breathing, you'll die. If you go to the top of a building and jump, you're going to hit the ground. And so many of these things that we use, whether it's in cities or, or businesses or families or schools, they're just principles that work for everybody. Ford, they some are tools, ingredients, and behaviors. You're right on the money. Now, Ford, you know, some people, you've probably heard this, that um, she's a born leader. He's a born leader. You've seen that, I'm, I, I'm certain. But a lot of people are just not. So what do you do with an individual that has an amazing concept, a great idea, but they, they just are devoid? They, they just sadly don't have these these tools well you know there's there's basically two kinds of people in the world i mean there's lots of different ways to break people up but one of the ways to break them up is there are people that are highly relational and there are people that are highly transactional and typically highly relational people drive highly transactional people nuts and highly transactional people task oriented they drive relational people nuts well, the reason that they drive each other nuts is because the relational people have never been given what I call the tools, ingredients, or behaviors to be more transactional, and the transactional people have never been given those tools, ingredients, behaviors to become more relational. And so when they have those principles that work in every sphere, then whatever level of leadership they're, they're at today, you, in, you increase that, you improve it by giving them more skills to be able to be a, a, a higher influencer, which I call a leader, a, bit, a bigger influencer, which is a leader. Now, that makes so much sense, uh, hearing what it is that uh, you have to say. Now, you speak in front of large groups, small groups all over the country, uh, motivating people. Um, give us some of those ingredients. Uh, do they have names? What are they? Uh, Yeah, they do. And and, and so when I talk about leadership, think of it as like we're going to make a cake. And so if we're going to talk on the radio here or talk to a crowd or take them through a leadership training. So first of all, let's talk about there are a lot of cookbooks published, but there's also a lot of books on how to cook. There are a lot of leadership books published, but there's not a lot of books on how to lead, when to lead, where to lead, who to lead. But there is a lot of theory on what leadership is. And so if you were going to go into a kitchen and make a cake, how successful would you be if you had never made a cake before, if you didn't have the ingredients, if you didn't have the utensils, or if you didn't have a recipe manual? And so if you, 
But to make a cake, there are ingredients that taste really, really good on their own, but there are other ingredients that get mixed into that cake that don't taste very good on their own. But for some reason, when you blend them together just right and you cook them at just the right temperature and you poke it a little to be sure that it's cooked just right and you put a little icing on it, with all with the right recipe, with the ingredients in the right order, that cake smells really good in the kitchen and it tastes even better when you eat it. Yeah. And so some of those too, but some of those ingredients, you know, are raw eggs and they're flour and they're baking soda. And a lot of leaders, we want the chocolate and the pineapple and the water and the milk, but we don't want to put the flour, the baking soda those things in our cake too i see and those ingredients are equally important they're fundamental you got to have them and so they're 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 fundamentals that you had just mentioned that you just have to have it because if you didn't have those uh, you're not going to have much of a cake that's right so 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 let's look at research you know research shows us it's pretty simple that when an event takes place in our life a thought occurs and from that thought we have a feeling and from that feeling, we choose an action, reaction, or behavior. And so if we understand that our thoughts are what cause us to feel and our feelings are what cause us to behave, then if we can learn to change our thoughts, then we can learn to change our feelings. And if we learn to change our feelings, we can learn to behave differently. And so for me, I believe the leadership crisis that we have in our country, it's not just in government. You know, it's in our churches, it's in our families, it's in our classrooms, is that we've moved to a place as leaders that we care more about what people think of us. We care more about how we're seen than we do about the people that follow us. True. At some point, we have to get over that, because, because that is the flower that has to go on the cake. For an example, uh, let's say that somewhere on this interview, I make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Now, if, if I do make a mistake and, you're, and your callers call you and say, man, that Ford Taylor guy, I can't believe he made that mistake. Well, once I make that mistake, i got two choices. I can either now stand up and defend what I did knowing it was wrong, or I can come back with one of the tools that we teach, uh, and again, in families, businesses, governments. And, and one of those tools would be two of them, let's say, was that you would call me and you would say, hey, Ford, can we talk, and could I have permission to share something with you? So this is a hard, fast tool. And you would come, you would come to me in a posture, and that posture that we teach is that there's four things that are in place that you would say to me, hey, I may be wrong, but I care about you, and I care about the influence you have. Could I share something with you? And that's called that you're going because you care about me. You're going in humility that you may be wrong, and, and, and you're going in pre forgiveness. In other words, I'm not calling you because I'm mad because you messed up my radio show. Yeah. I'm calling you because I care that, that you have influence and our influence continues. And then you tell me the truth straight up. Wow. And so, those four ingredients, when you go to someone with those ingredients, it's amazing how open people are to hear your feedback. So, now, you, you beat your transparency is important then. There you go. And so if you, this is it, you're ready, transparency and vulnerability, which is called humility. And so if you tell me I did something wrong, and I, and I agree with you, I've got two choices. I can defend it, I can act like I didn't say it, I can act like somebody just heard it wrong, or I can say to you, Keith, thank you so much for bringing me this feedback. You are right, I did do that, whatever it is, I did it. And Keith, I was wrong for doing that, and I'm so sorry. And when you can... If you can find a place in your heart to forgive me, would you do that? And Keith, I give you permission if you ever see that behavior out of me again to hold me accountable not to do it. And then the sixth step of that apology is, is there anything else? Well, those are just two simple tools wow. that can restore relationship with a country. I mean, can you imagine if we had a president that stood up and said, you know, I said that. I was wrong when I said it. And I'm asking the country, I am sorry, will you forgive me? And hold me accountable not to behave that way anymore. That's huge. Can you imagine what would happen? The response would be unbelievable. Or a wife, there you go, or a wife to a husband. It restores those relationships. Now we can make good decisions because we stay at the table, because we walk in care or love, pre-forgiveness, truth. Anyway, so there's just a couple of tools that we teach. Wow. I'm just, I'm blown away. I just felt like I was sitting, you know, with the audience and um, I mean, and I know our audience is eating this up. This is uh, this is this is great. Now you do these um, 
transformational leadership conferences. Uh, is there many of them that you do a year? Tell me how uh, your organization works. Okay, well, we historically have done a lot of them on an annual basis. This year, we've kind of pushed the pause button the first half of the year, so I'll be back to doing them again uh, in the second half. And part of the reason is we've also developed a virtual online training platform that people can now get the training. So what used to be a five-day program, we now do much shorter because people can continue to get it as long as they want 24-7 by the virtual platform. And where do we go to sign up? Now, is this for businesses or individual, either or? Remember, uh, an organization is anytime two or more people in relationship. And if you have influence with at least one person, that makes you a leader. And so it's for everybody. There you go. It can be mom or dad. It can be mom and dad. It can be husband and wife. It can be two best friends. It can be two business partners. It can be a government leader. So uh, to find a live event, which we are just now starting to post them for the rest of the year, uh, those are just now coming online. So uh, the website is transformlead.com. Transformlead.com. Real easy to remember. You know, miscommunication, you know, where somebody has a misfire, um, where they did not uh, want to say what they said, and it's hard to sometimes take it back, and some people don't, and that can ruin a relationship um, all the way around. It could ruin a business. I'm sure you've seen businesses destroyed because of it, right? Absolutely. Uh, we've seen countries destroyed because of it. We've seen families. Uh, you know, Keith, what's fun for me is we, we actually see so many families restored, so many companies restored, so many small groups restored when they implement these tools. Uh, but, but you are correct. We can destroy it because of our pride, our arrogance, not wanting to admit that we made a mistake. We're all human. We all make them. You know, why would we keep acting like we don't? Now, why don't we see more humility like he mentioned, maybe our president, if he said something wrong or offended, you know, a, a bunch of people that he shouldn't have said what he said and how he said it. Why wouldn't uh, I mean, you know, not everybody's made up. Uh, does it show weakness um, for, for people, for leaders to say that they were wrong or does it show actually more strength? Well, you know, in the world, we, we, we believe, you know, the concept that we believe is that if we're transparent, vulnerable, and humble, we actually believe that that loses credibility when in reality it's 100% right the opposite of that. Uh, you know, when I go out and speak and, and I share with people about these, I mean, some really pretty good successes, but, you know, so what? Because most of this training, while it came from a lot of those successes, a lot of the tools are helping people be that successful. I also talk about... I can't hear you. I said, I also, can you hear me now? Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay. I, uh, so when I talk about these successes and these trainings and on this on-demand platform, and by the way, the on-demand platform is tlondemand.com. TL, so that's the two websites. TL, I didn't answer your whole question a while ago. But Keith, when I go out and talk about it, by no means do I just talk about the successes. You know, I share about the fact that in my arrogance of being at the top of the trade journals, I also cheated on my wife. You know, I share about having my heart being broken and how I had to apologize to her and how these tools restored our marriage. I talk about being sexually abused in kindergarten by a female school teacher and the path that sent me down. You know, I talk about, you know, the mistake I made the day before, you know, uh, one day I was doing one of these trainings, and I called the team, and I said, hey, I'm going to be a little bit late. And they said, why? I said, I'll tell you when I get there. I was already at the training when I called them, and it happened to be in the city I lived in. So I turned back around, and I went home because I had said something to my wife that morning that was just inappropriate. And I went back in, and I, and I did that six-step apology with her and asked her to forgive me. And, of course, she did because, I mean, any wife who's going to forgive a husband for what I did with the cheating is yeah. going to forgive a, a, a one-sentence thing. Sure. And I was an hour late to the training, and everybody said, why were you an hour late? And I said, look, today I'm going to talk to you about marriage, and there's no way I could sit up here and talk to you about marriage after what I said to my wife this morning. I had to go back and straighten that out. Because, see, I'm human. I, I, I'm going to make mistakes just like you do. But I'm going to give you the tools to help you overcome those mistakes when you make them. Now, you were wildly successful in business, and yet you had some of these issues that a lot of people didn't even know about. Um, When was it that you 
decided I'm going to come all out with 